This is my very late 2021 bullet journal setup. This is also my very first video, so thank you so much for visiting my tavern. I went with the Archer and Olive bullet journal for my very first bullet journal. It comes with, you know, the, the bookmark, the pocket where I put things and then forget I put things in there, pin holder. Yeah, it's got a cute little bee on the front. So I reference a lot of books and other planners. These are my previous year's planners. The Aligned Life Planner teaches you how to set goals around the phases of the moon, what habits and food to focus on during specific seasons, stuff like that. I will leave a link to these books and planners down below. This one has some similar themes in it. It also includes the witch's sabbats if you're into that kind of thing. It's meant to be a coloring book. I like to journal and there just wasn't enough room for me to do that and I ended up doing this weird post-it note thing. Then I reference this book. It has basically a holiday every single day. And then I copy some stuff about the moon in the back of this book. This is a cool book if you're into witchy stuff. Here is the 2021 Magical Almanac. It has associations for dates based on astrology and colors and incense and stuff. And then this is kind of like the days by moon signs or moon phases and like what to do on those days. So yeah. The theme for my bullet journal this year is the tavern. The tavern is a reference to when I used to role play back in high school and college. I created this world called Red Ravine and in the ravine was the White Raven Tavern, which was run by Tiamat, thus Tiamat's Tavern. Uh, it was a homage to a character I retired who was reincarnated as a white raven to watch over her family. The idea is I'm spiritually building the tavern this year, a place where I can be creative and run my business and share with people who like what I do. If you've known me for long enough, you'll know that I'm kind of obsessed with albino animals. If you Google white raven, they're just badass. I know there's some uh, pre-existing lore about white ravens, but I really just picked it because of the canon existing in my own world. It's not a reference to Game of Thrones or anything else, I promise. Uh, here I'm adding some raindrops because rainy weather is absolutely my favorite weather. And i um, um, got a coffee cup here because I'm a coffee fiend. You know, I'm trying to uh, be better about it. I'm trying to drink more teas, herbal teas, and I only exclusively do half-calf now. I would go full decaf, but um, decaf coffee tastes nasty. I used to not be able to tell the difference, but now I definitely do. It just tastes like chemicals to me. I can't do it. Oh, it was so hard doing this tale without moving the book around. Usually when I'm drawing, I'm moving the book all around so that I have like the best angle for certain strokes. But for the sake of recording, I try to keep it as stationary as possible. Um, now I'm just going to deal with this bleeding problem. And also this page that glued to the cover thingy is all wonky. So I'm just going to tape this shit together. And as I'm taping this down, I run out of tape. I'm just putting glue stick around the edge so that it's more of a full seal, I guess. And then that came out perfect. I was actually shocked. But when I went to do the front page, I don't know if it's because I'm using double-sided tape instead, or if it's just the nature of the wonkiness of this page in general. But it was a little more crookedy. I actually, I don't show it here, but I ripped it open and <laughs> fixed it. Now I'm doing the classic grid page. So here I fucking messed up and I'm trying to fix it with my Posca markers because obviously I can't use like correction tape on craft paper. It actually worked out pretty good. I'll just have a credits thing in the description because there's so many things that, you know, I, I know a lot of people credit this to Amber Rach Lee, I think her name is. I'm really new to the community. I don't know who's who, you know, but I know this grid page is credited to her a lot, but then I've also heard that she's not the first one to do it. So, I don't know. Then I see a lot of people write cheat cheat or, you know, put some words here. But uh, I just, I just felt like that was boring and so I just put a fucking dragon. It makes no fucking sense, but. This also kind of ties into 
the tavern being related to my business. I'm hoping to start an Etsy shop in the next coming months and translate any uh, doodles I do in my bullet journal into stickers. If there's any designs that I do that you would like to see as a sticker, please let me know. There might be designs that I didn't realize people actually would like as a sticker. So that's my excuse for drawing dragons everywhere. <laughs> Moving on to the key page, I'm doing a border of moonflowers. I think they're a type of morning glories. If you know me, I ha always have moonflowers and morning glories growing in my garden. Moonflowers are large white flowers that only bloom at night, and they only bloom once or twice before they die, and I think they're really magical and neat. Morning glories are also very poisonous, so be careful if you're thinking about planting any in your garden and you have uh, animals or small children. Here I'm just doing a, a key. I'm putting a raven skull on the key because I am kind of obsessed with raven skulls and ravens and they're um, kind of a theme that I'm going to try to keep going throughout this book because it is the book of the tavern and it's the white raven tavern and I think I don't know. Ravens are really cool and smart and I want to make friends friends with the ravens in my city, but you know, they just don't come close enough and I don't know how to do that, so just I'll just pretend. I'll just role play that I have a, a pet or a friend familiar uh, raven. If you are using the uniball or any other kind of gel pen, I suggest having a piece of scrap paper nearby to unclog it because those suckers like to get clogged all the time. And then I'm doing the index page. I know a lot of people are like, eh, index page is, uh, is dumb and pointless. I never use it, but I'm the kind of person who, even if I don't use it, I just really like the idea of it like the idea that I'm indexing my own work as if it was an actual book or something. <laughs> so, and I only gave myself two pages because I'm stupid. I'm just continuing the Moonflower motif. I am using the Papermate Inkjoy 0.7. It is probably my favorite pen right now. Just so smooth check the scrap paper on the side. Poscas, you especially want to um, test on scrap paper because if it is not flowing nicely, you do not want to press down on your actual piece of artwork. You want to do that on a test paper because sometimes big blobs of paint will come out and ruin your artwork. Um, I'm also putting key markers at the end of some of these because I have this big ass grimoire that I want to transfer everything into. So these pages are kind of like the blueprints or the prototypes of what I will actually be putting into my grimoire and hopefully I can make a video of that someday. Now I'm doing the future log. I skipped the, the year at a glance thing because I just don't, um, I don't know what it's for. Like I feel like my hand's gonna fall off. I need to save my hands as much as possible because I get horrible pains in my wrists. Um, so I just didn't see what the point of having that little calendar was for when I could just very quickly open my phone and look at the calendar on there if I really need to see the whole month. Oh yeah, so if you could tell me what that's for, <laughs> what its practical use is, besides just looking cute, um, let me know. Because I obviously, I really don't know. I, I probably gonna regret not putting it in. It's probably important. I don't know. And then also my future log. I only did six months because I only plan on using this particular journal for six months. And unless I get bored of it and switch over sooner. Um, I also didn't include January. I sw jumped right to February because I don't know why I would be future logging January when it's already in January, you know what I mean? Um, so if that, if there's some reason I should have put January, let me know. I figure I just put January like to do's or future logs in the January like goals task page thing, you know? Am I wrong? All right, 
So, <laughs> this whole setup took me over a week. Um, I have it going at like 2,000% speed. This particular page took me all day, like one day, and I'm cutting out a lot. I'm cutting a lot of like, cutting out a lot of fussing and touch-ups and stuff like that. I'm trying to cut it down to only the most interesting parts and cutting out the parts where I think you guys might get bored. So I picked up this bottle of this fancy black 3.0 um, last year. It is supposed to be the blackest black. It just sort of absorbs light and it looks pretty badass on camera. Uh, because it's been sitting in my art bin for over a year, it kind of got goopy, so I don't know if it's any good anymore, but it seemed to come- it worked okay. From the same company, I got this glow-in-the-dark powder shit, and I'm just always looking for an excuse to use it. I had to do quite a few layers, which made me nervous, because I was worried about the paper warping. If I was smart about this, I would have done all the black parts, like, on maybe on some black craft paper or something like that, and I pasted them in, um, and that way I wouldn't have such warped paper, and probably would have gone a thousand times faster, but I'm not smart, so this is how I did it, and I don't hate the end results. I'm using plants to represent the different focuses of each moon phase during the month. For example, on during the new moon is when you plant the seeds you want to see grow. And then during the full moon, it will have come to fruition. And here's what it looks like with the lights off. On to the holidays page and moons. This is mostly American holidays and witches' sabbats as well as the different moons and their name and which astrological sign they are in for that month. And naturally, I am keeping the moonflower theme going here. And then on the other side, I wanted a little place to write down what I would like to leave behind in 2020 and what I would like to manifest this coming year. I know a lot of people have been saying, thank God 2020 is over, but I'm really kind of freaked out that 2020 is already over. I guess I just want to leave behind, I don't know, none of your business. Anyway. Moving right along to the Seasonal Aspects page, um, this is kind of like a breakdown of what habits to focus on during each season. I decided to include these little tarot cards. These are cards that I personally associate with these specific seasons. The suit underneath each card are the typical alignments with the seasons that you would find on other in other resources. I made my dog, the dog and the moon tarot card. I thought that was pretty funny. And all the other tarot cards feature T-Mat. The Hermit has a special place in my heart because the Hermit is associated with Virgo and as an introverted Virgo, Virgo rising, I really like that this card kind of celebrates the more positive aspects of going inward and gaining wisdom and self-awareness. So I'm not going to write out all the text on here because one, that would be boring, and two, my hand would fall off, and three, I think you should check out the Aligned Life Planner if you want more info about this stuff because the creator kind of goes over it in her planner, and I think it's a pretty cool planner, worth checking out. Yeah. I also have the days of the week and element associations. These aren't in the Aligned Life Planner. I think I got these out of the Magical Almanac. And here's my goals and bucket list. I wish I had 
name this Intentions instead, because I think that's a really clever name for it. All encompassing and less pressure, more positivity, my intentions, you know, instead of bucket lists, kind of morbid. Then I made a page about books I want to read because I have a really bad problem where I like books and I like buying books, but I don't read them. I just collect them, I guess. <laughs> so this year I wanted to make a list of books to remind myself of the books that I own and get my ass on reading them. I somehow forgot to record the last bit of me finishing up the coloring on this page. <laughs> on to my food spreads. The seasonal food spread is a list of foods that is also heavily referenced from the Aligned Life Planner. I also will not be filling it in entirely. I really like these dividers that I made using the fruits and vegetables associated with the season. I kind of went overboard on them a little bit though. <laughs> Didn't mean for them to be so complicated. I also intended to color them, but by the time I was done, I had decided I really liked the way it looked black and white. But if you had this as a sticker, would you want it colored or would you prefer the black and white line art style? I absolutely love autumn. If you've been to my house, you'll see that it is decorated for fall all year round. I love pumpkins and mushrooms and oranges and rain. These are supposed to be mandarins, but because I didn't color them, I don't know if they really read like that. They just kind of look like wrinkly fruit. And then this cauldron, I definitely would like to make into a sticker. Do you think it's too tall for a sticker though? Do you think I should make the plume short or is it kind of cool to be so tall? Obviously I would make these stickers digitally so they wouldn't look so sketchy and unfinished. I want to do more cooking this year, but I never know what to cook, so the meal idea spread is for me to write down meal ideas. <laughs> so if I'm at a loss for what I want to cook, I can just reference that page. Hopefully I can come up with something that is not soup. I tend to do a lot of stews and chicken and dumplings and that kind of stuff. There's a reason I put a cauldron on this page. I really want to use washi tape. I have so much washi tape. I don't really know how to decorate with it. <laughs> Everybody does really clever things, I've noticed. I happen to have these Morning Glory and Ivy washi tape, and I think that fits perfectly with my theme. I don't remember what these branches were supposed to be, but they are definitely supposed to be something specific. And I totally forgot what they were. <laughs> so this is related to my tavern as a business again. If I get an idea for a sticker, let's say, I can just jot it down in here instead of putting it on a random post-it note that I'm never going to find again, which I often do. And now I'm attempting to do a year in photos type spread. I only did six months, as I'll only be using this journal for that long. For those of you who don't know, this is a page where each month you find your favorite photo of the month and paste it in here. So it's like a mini photo album. Most people use mini printers to do this. I do not have one of those. I don't know if I'm just looking in the wrong place, but they're almost like $200 and I feel like that's not worth it. That's more than a large printer is. So I already have a regular printer, so I foresee myself just printing out pictures and cutting them up and taping them in, probably. If you know any little printers that are under 60 bucks, please let me know. <laughs> and that concludes my 2021 bullet journal setup. Thank you so much for sticking around this long. I know it was a very long video and it took me a very long time to finish this setup. I hope to have my January setup and my first two weeks of January setup videos coming soon. It's already halfway through January. I didn't get my bullet journal until after Christmas, so I got it a little late, so I'm a little behind everyone else, but I hope you found and enjoyed my video anyway. Thank you so much for visiting the tavern. It means a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for what you would like to see me draw next or turn into a sticker, please let me know in the comments down below. If you liked this video, please subscribe. 
I also stream regularly on Twitch. I do a lot of live art and commission work. My handle there is also Tiamat's Tavern. We have fun. I hope you have a wonderful day or night or whatever type of day it is. Bye-bye.